So, polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, is a way of amplifying um, pieces of DNA. Mm -hmm. And what it makes possible is forensic science, genetic fingerprinting, anything where you're taking very small amounts of DNA. It's also used in uh, genome sequencing, so something called interrupted PCR is, is used. Right, so the first step to him is that we've got two strands of DNA, you've got one strand that runs 5 prime to 3 prime, one other strand that runs 5 prime to 3 prime there. That's the numbering of the carbons, remember, so this is 5 to 3, and 5 prime to 3 prime, going that way and that way. Now, if you do remember, these are then bonded together by hydrogen bonds, and these hydrogen bonds across, occur across here. Now, the first step is we're going to heat this to 95 degrees. And 95 degrees is going to melt the hydrogen bonds here. And when that happens, the DNA is going to come apart. So we're then going to then have two strands of DNA. So the DNA is melted and come apart. We've now got two strands. We then allow it to cool to 55 degrees centigrade and at 55 degrees centigrade we have two primers which anneal that is they form hydrogen bonds with the DNA and the two primers attach so the primers have annealed and this means they've formed hydrogen bonds and the next step is that the um, enzyme called DNA polymerase, that's going to bind. to the strands of DNA next to the primer. And then the next step after that is to heat it. And you're going to heat it up to 72 degrees. Okay, so having heated it to 72 degrees, the um, polymerase will then move along and bring in new nucleotides. So the new nucleotides are going to be are in the solution. So this is a ATGC. And the polymerase is going to move along. The polymerase is going to move this way and this way and it's going to bring in these new nucleotides and it's going to join the phosphodiester bonds together. So at this point the DNA will extend because the polymerase will move this way and the polymerase will move this way. So the polymerase, remember, is the enzyme that's used in semi-conservative replication. The primer is a short piece of single-stranded DNA which has annealed to the um, single strand of DNA. This is because polymerase won't work on just single stranded DNA. It needs a bit that's double stranded to get a hold of before it starts the, um, the catalyzing the addition of all the nucleotides. So remember it was heat to 95 to get the hydrogen bonds to melt, cool to 55 to get the primers and the DNA polymerase to um, bind on heat to 72 to get it to extend. Now at the end of, of that process of 72 degrees, so at the end of that process you'll have made two semi-conservatively copied bits of the original DNA. Now the genius here is that the next step you can carry out is that you repeat the whole process in that you heat it again to 95 degrees. Now when we heat it again to 95 degrees, we will again melt these hydrogen bonds. And the next thing that happens after that is a primer is going to anneal, DNA polymerase is going to bind on, then it's going to semi-conservatively replicate both strands. Now the absolute genius here is that the DNA polymerase if it was from any normal organism, then heating it to 95 degrees would denature it. But instead, we take DNA polymerase from an, a hot spring bacteria that is a thermophile. So the DNA polymerase is called 
thermophilus, which is temperature liking. You are a file, you like something. Thermophilus aquaticus. Um, convinced I spelled that right, but there we go. Thermophilus aquaticus, which is shortened to TAQ or TAC polymerase. Now, because you use DNA from a thermophile, remember you went 95 to 55. So 95 you melted, 55 they annealed. 72, it the DNA polymerase extended along and brought in the nucleotides, which paired up complementarily, and then it formed hydrogen, formed phosphodiester bonds. Then you heated it to 95 degrees again. Mm -hmm. So every time you do this cycle, the quantity of DNA doubles each time. So if you get, and this cycle takes about 10 minutes to do. Okay. So you can set this up and get it running overnight, and after you know, 30 cycles, you will have produced two to the power of 30 DNA. So you would have multiplied the DNA to a colossal quantity, which means you can take very small amounts of DNA and produce enormous quantities of it, which you can then use for gel electrophoresis, genetic engineering, um, genetic fingerprinting, and that sort of thing. So the, the importance of the polymerase chain reaction is as a tool. Yeah.